Here is a view of an esophagus that has been opened up. Notice, as you're looking at the mucosal or internal or luminal surface, you can see some underlying blood vessels. Otherwise, the uh, mucosal aspect seems pretty shiny and uniform. You'll also notice that there are areas here and here and here, which look like little small uh, ulcerated areas, perhaps slightly elevated, central areas of ulceration and uh, hemorrhage. And here's a fresher lesion here that looks primarily like it has not uh, undergone central hemorrhage or ulceration yet, but it has shown some type of uh, mucosal change. Well, if you saw this lesion on a person's lip, uh, you'd probably call it herpes without even batting an eyelid. Uh, only in this case, it happens to be in the esophagus. This is herpes esophagitis. And it looks very much like it would look uh, any on any other squamous surface. Here's some residual squamous mucosa. Here was one of those hemorrhagic ulcerated areas. Here's some smooth muscle of the esophagus. And notice that the uh, areas of increased um, inflammatory cell infiltrates and perhaps even necrosis extend uh, well beyond or deep to the mucosa as well. Let's look at an ulcerated area. Here's a non-ulcerated area. Here's an ulcerated area. Here's a non-ulcerated area. Let's look at this ulcerated area. And we could see um, that the uh, epithelium is absent. Up here, there's some necrotic epithelium. Up here, there's some perhaps partly involved epithelium. Here's an area where the smooth muscle is coming almost all the way up to the ulcerated area. And notice that within this area, you have a hard time seeing outlines of cells, and there's a lot of fibrin as well. So you can suspect this is necrosis, even within the smooth muscle. This is a very a deep-seated uh, inflammation, isn't it? Let's go to another ulcerated area, like here. And you might decide whether that's fibrin or whether that's perhaps some residual of a squamous mucosa. You get the impression that this used to be this, but now it's largely necrotic and fibrinoid uh, and replaced or at least extensively infiltrated by neutrophils. Here's an area where there's some residual uh, epithelium. So let's take a look at that because that seems to be the worst part of the epithelium. Notice that within this epithelium, uh, and specifically within the nuclei, you'll see little red uh, inclusions like here and like here. And I'm going to zip to an, another area which I have pre-sorted, in which you can see more intranuclear red inclusion bodies. This is classical for herpes. These are called Cowdery type A inclusions. Here's probably another one. Here's uh, definitely another one. Uh, and these are what you might look for if you were to just take a squamous mucosa, like an oral cavity, or even a skin lesion, and smear the uh, lesions onto a slide and do a Zank test. T Z A N. K. And if you did a Zank test, you might see cells uh, that were exfoliated that have these nice red intranuclear inclusions, often surrounded by a kind of a clear zone. That's classical for a Cowdery A type inclusion. If you see these cells on a smear uh, and you suspect uh, herpes, now you absolutely know it's herpes. Uh, is there anything else to say about this case? I don't think so, except it is, a, once again, a classical, uh, beautiful case. They couldn't have picked a better slide. It's a, a case of severe herpes esophagitis, also present in immunocompromised uh, patients. Thank you very much.